I got back at it this week uh, for my favorite segments, you know, Q&A, and got a great question on the idea of like, how can I raise my prices without pissing people off or losing clients? I had a great question from a uh, great person on LinkedIn. And in this episode, I really dive in deep about the idea of like, how to effectively raise your prices, but I start by actually breaking down the idea of like your own mindset and your own relationship with money. And then I kind of give a different perspective from each part, like from you as a therapist, from the client itself and the business as well. Originally, I was gonna do all this in one podcast, but I really started getting long-winded and I wanted to break this into two parts. So the next part will drop next week as well. But the first part is we gotta really change your relationship and your mindset around money and the value that you provide and the results that you're able to give. So I really enjoyed making this podcast and I hope it helps you guys out as well. Hope you enjoy the show. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Soft Tissue Revolution podcast. Dr. Matt Maggio here. Thank you for stopping by and giving me one of your most valuable resources, your time and your attention. I always appreciate all the downloads and all the people that are listening to this podcast. Keeps me going and really helps me along my mission to help people get better quality hands-on soft tissue treatment so we can make the world a better place and keep people off pain pills, injections, and surgeries, which only make things worse. So back at it for Q&A. Q&A is my most popular segment. Haven't done one in a while. We're already on number 14 of Q&A. I got a great question from Lisa on LinkedIn uh, a few weeks ago. And she said, I'm fully booked for the next three months. I know I should be grateful, especially with what is going on with COVID in the crazy world. I've been wanting to raise my prices for the last three years, but always backed out last minute as I was afraid of losing clients or making them mad. On the other hand, I am working way too hard. My body is getting beat up and I'm not making the kind of money I need to get ahead and feel stable in my own life. I know that's, that sounds greedy, but I have to do something or I'm not going to last. What is the best way to raise my prices without pissing people off that have been loyal clients for years and stuck with me during COVID? Great question, and thank you so much for sending that over. Um, just a reminder to everyone else out there, if you have a question or topic you want us to cover, um, there's some prompts in the show notes about how to go and do that because, like I said, I really like doing these. But I decided to actually break this into a two-part podcast. So this will be part one, and then on part two, I'll go through the actual idea of what happens um, when you decide to raise the prices when you realize that – that is what's going to be done and you make that commitment. So the first part of this whole podcast is I'm just going to go through a lot of things, um, really about your mindset around money, your relationship for money, your self-worth, your value, all that kind of stuff. Because when it all comes down to it at the end of the day, it becomes about not feeling like you deserve what you truly do if you're doing good work. So let's just break it down. Let's just start with our relationship around money. Money's just a transfer of energy. That's all it is. Your money sits in your bank account for that and you earn money so that you can use it to do things. Have your money work for you and that's what it's doing. People are paying you money to help them with something, probably to get out of pain, to feel better, to something like that and they're just exchanging energy. That's all it is. We get this whole mindset and relationship with money where we're like, it becomes very emotional. It doesn't need to be. All you're doing is just exchanging energy. Um, another thing is, do you have true conviction in what you do? Like, are you the best at what you do? And you've put the time in, you've been doing it, you excel, you're fixing people, you're building that reputation in the area. If you have true conviction in what you do, that goes across to the client as well. And they know that you're somebody worthwhile coming in and easily spending their money with because you're giving them good value. Um, do you feel like you're providing amazing value? Like at the end of the day, like for what you're charging, is it 10 times more valuable for what you do? There's always little things that you can do to kind of add in to make even better value as you go. Um, and the other thing is like with that relationship around money, think of all the dumb shit that people pay for. 
think about this. You know, people that come in and they have a purse that costs two thousand dollars, or some special type of shoes. I don't even know what shoes are, but red bottom shoes. I guess that's what somebody was telling me. They cost thousands of dollars. They spend money on these vacations. They do all this, but they don't want to invest in their health and wellness. So it's like there's a lot of things in there that you can spend money on and the best money you can ever spend on is in your own health and your own wellness. So I have a really good podcast that I did a couple months back where I really dove in about this idea of like what are called price demons, how to price things accordingly, how to charge more and do everything in a better way. So go back and check that one out. It's a really good podcast where it has a lot of good useful information. So it just starts with your relationship around money. Like it's just a transfer of energy. Do you truly believe that you're the best at what you do? Are you providing amazing value? People are spending money on dumb shit all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down this whole idea and this whole question of how can I raise my prices without pissing people off or losing clients from three perspectives. I'm going to go through your own as the provider of the solution in your office, the client's viewpoint, and then from your business as well. So Come along with me on this journey. We're going to break each one down. So from your own perspective. So this is what I'm hearing a lot from the clients that I'm coaching and that are learning and implementing my system, uh, the peak method. They're working way too hard. They don't get enough money for what they're doing. Their bodies are beat up. They're afraid that they won't last. And what they're experiencing is something that I call the golden handcuffs. So what are the golden handcuffs? So it's like, hey, you're booked up, but you're working really fucking hard at doing that. You're, it's great to be booked up to a point, but it's not, it's not sustainable. You know, you're doing five, six, seven massages per day. Maybe you're spending an hour, hour and a half. Like that beats up your body, beats up your back, beats up your neck. You're having to change linens in between, reschedule people, do all this stuff. And you're not charging accordingly for what you do because you're just getting that body more and more beat up. And the other thing that I see a lot from the your own the therapist perspective is that you feel bad about charging what you're worth. This goes right back into the other idea of like, people spend a lot of money on a lot of stupid shit that they don't need. And the one thing that they actually do need is a solution for their problem and to get their injury fixed and feel and function better and avoid bigger problems like pain pills, injections, and surgeries. As I said that, you are so freaking valuable that you should never feel bad about what you charge. And everyone does that. Like you default, you're like, oh, I'm very subservient and... I feel bad about charging that. That's when you get in that idea of like, are you a service or a solutions provider? I talk about this all the time, but when you're a service provider, you focus on the price. When you're a solutions provider, you focus on actually fixing it and charging accordingly for what you do. So it's like, hey, you're booked up. That's good, but who knows what's really gonna happen? Like, and your body is getting beat up. You can't continue to go like you are. And those are the people that work with me in my coaching program are the people that are on the surface appear like they're doing really well, but they're just getting beat up. They're seeing way too many people and it is not sustainable. They're redlining it. And eventually what's going to happen when you're that booked up, you're not getting paid accordingly. You're going to burn the fuck out and you're not going to be able to do anything. That's why I call them the golden handcuffs because you are making money. You appear to be making good money. You're booked. You don't have to worry, but your body is not going to hold up. Now, from the client perspective, here's the honest truth. People that pay more are a hell of a lot easier to deal with. I've talked about this in my clinics and stuff like that. We offer three levels of treatment in our clinic. One of them we call like our platinum level where the client pays for everything up front and it comes out and averages like $85 a session for like a 15 minute appointment. I know that all sounds like bullshit, but it's really not. That can actually happen and people are willing to do that. The people that invest in the platinum packages are the ones that are actually are more invested because the more you pay for something, the more likely you're going to be able to stick it through and not be a pain in the ass. Um, the other thing with the client and you have to understand is that you guys are all square. They paid you, you delivered, you don't owe them anything else. And that's what we think. We're like, oh, I owe these people more. No, you don't owe the client anything and they shouldn't expect anything more from you as well. They don't like 
get someone to come and do work at their house that's like a roofer or like fixes something and then ask them to also be their friend and do things on the back end. It doesn't happen, but we do this in the injury treatment space. Uh, what else did I write down? You're so good. The client's looking at you. You're so good that they don't actually want to lose you. Think about that. If you're booked up, people are coming in left and right. You are so good that you're better than everyone else out there because there's a lot of other options where people can go. Um, Lastly, just with people and human nature, and this is what that Price Demons podcast really dives in and talks about on a better level, is that people always want a deal. They're always looking for a bargain. It's just part of human nature and they want to have a deal as well. So now we've looked at it from your own perspective, from the client's perspective, and now what does it say with the business when you're afraid to raise your prices, you're afraid you're going to lose people. Number one is when your prices are lower, what you're really saying is that I'm scared. What are you scared about? You might be scared that maybe your treatments aren't that good. Maybe you don't have true conviction in your product. Maybe you're just not willing to charge accordingly for what you do. The problem for your business and being fully booked is it it leaves you in limbo. So one thing is like, sure, it's great to be booked up. But one thing that we teach and we show in what's called the peak method in the training is we get the clients to pay for all their treatment up front. So that money is coming in. You never know. It's been a crazy year. 2020, 2021 has been crazy. Just because people book doesn't always mean that they're going to show up. But what I like to do is have my income up front and I'm in control. So you don't get people rescheduling. You don't get people canceling last minute. You're in control of the money. When you're in control of the money, you're in control of the outcome because people have put their money down and they're willing to invest in treatment. And the problem also is you just, you really can't grow. You're stuck. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm really busy and I'm doing well, but you can never really expand And get to that next level where you make the kind of money, what I call like freedom money, financial freedom money, where you're making at least 100K per year working less than 25 hours a week and actually providing solutions. And that's what I'm going to cover on the second part was the idea of like wrapping your, your brain around the idea that like, hey, it's okay to raise your prices. You deserve it. Having some deep talks with yourself and just some realizations that it's just money. It's nothing crazy. There hasn't doesn't have to be an emotional component tied to it. It's just something that you have to do. And if you're on the fence and you're not quite sure, I really want you to dive in deep about your mindset and your relationship about money and do some really deep introspection. You know, here, here I go being all woo-woo and woo and all that, but like, are you the best at what you do? Have you put time in? Have you put energy in? but you're not charging what you should. People have a duty and an obligation to pay you more than you're worth. Because if you're doing that and you're actually fixing their problem, you're gonna be in a different echelon from that. But if you keep going like you are, you're redlining it, you're seeing six or seven massages a day, you know at the end of the day when you go home, your body is fucking smoked. And you look at your schedule and you're like, oh man, what do I do? If you're going to keep doing that, you should at least get paid accordingly because you're going to have to pay for that later down the road. So that's all I got for the part one of this podcast is just the idea of like getting your head wrapped around the idea that it's okay to charge more. People pay money for a lot a lot of other things that aren't even close to as important as their health and their wellness. And you have to just really change your perspective and your relationship around money and get to a better place. So on the next podcast on part two, because I could have made this one pretty long winded, I'm going to go through what to actually do, how to actually raise the price and the the process that you go through and not have it be something where you really worry about it and you become really successful on the back end and just help you with like a guideline to how to effectively raise that price and not get people pissed off. And that's going to really help. I'll share some stories um, that we've done with other coaching clients that's really helped them transform not just their business and their practice, but their income as well. Because at the end of the day, if you're doing good work, you're a soft tissue injury specialist, you're fixing people's problems, you're keeping them off pain pills, injections, and surgeries, you are worth way more than you can ever imagine. So that's all we got for this one. Stay tuned. Part two will drop next week. I appreciate you guys listening to the podcast, Um, all the support we get from all over the place. It's the best compliment you can give me and keeps me going and wants me to really continue to grow this soft tissue revolution. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to the show. If you're a massage therapist and you want to learn more about our new methods that allow you to easily double your income without working any harder or getting burnout, we have some free resources for you. One, 
Join our Facebook group, The Soft Tissue Revolution. Two, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Three, request our free training series. Four, leave us a five-star review and share this podcast with anyone else you know it can help. Links to all our channels and free training are in the show notes.